All right, here we go. Unit three, lesson three. This is our, f let's take a look. So our learning target is we can find the prime factorization of a number and we can find the greatest common factor between two numbers. <clears throat> so a prime number is a number that can only be divided by number one or itself. And so there's kind of some, I guess, super common examples. So I'll just list a few of them off here um, that are examples of prime numbers. Two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, um, 24, no, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And it goes on and on and on and on, okay? But again, as you notice, there's a lot more at the beginning. And then as the numbers start getting bigger, they start to have more factors. So they get harder and harder to find. But those are some of the smaller ones that are super common. And then a composite number is like the opposite of a prime number. So it's a number that can be divided by more. Um, it can be divided by two, it can be divided by five, it can be divided by 10. Um, it can be divided by more than just a number, the number one or itself. So I'm gonna say opposite of a prime can be divided by other numbers, not just number one or itself. So again, if I look at these two examples right here, I think, all right, 23. And this is where you can potentially use your divisibility rules so again, if you remember from our previous lesson, we're like, um, okay, so it doesn't end in a five or a zero. So I know it's not five. It can't be divided by five. It can't be divided by 10. It doesn't end in a zero. If I add them up, two plus three is five. Can five be divided by um, three? Oh, no. Can five be divided by nine? No. And there's no other numbers that I can think of that um, 23 can be divided by. So I'm going to call this a prime. 23 is a prime number. But when I look at 129, I'm thinking, hmm, okay, that's a big number again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add up the digits, 1 plus 2 plus 9, and I'm going to get 12. Well, 12 actually can be divided by 3, yes. It is 43 or excuse me, 12 divided by three equals four. But when I do 129 divided by three, I get 43. So because I can divide it by a number other than itself or one, I'm gonna call or I'm gonna label this number a composite number. All right, prime factorization trees. So I am gonna do this two different ways. Again, to just show you, there's more than one way to do a prime factor tree. And I think you'll see that in this example. So let's do 825 right here. And then we'll do 825 in a different color over here. And you'll see me do it two different ways. So if I get this composite number, okay, this is a composite number. So I know that it can be divided by two numbers that aren't necessarily um, one or itself. <clears throat> and I do see that it has this 25 right here. So I know that it can be divided by a multiple of 25. So I'm going to say, okay, 25, how many times does 25 go into 825? And it's kind of a big number. It's 33. So if I took 25 multiplied by 33, I would get 825. 
But both of these numbers are not prime as well because I can break these numbers down. So that's where the tree comes into play is we're going to keep breaking these down till we get prime numbers. So I want to think, hmm, is there a two, is there a prime number that I can use to multiply to get 25? Yes, there is. 5 times 5. So here I have 5 times 5. That's actually perfect because 5 is a prime number. 5 is a prime number. Okay, that part is done. Now I got to go on the other side and I got to say, okay, what numbers can multiply to get 33? Well, actually, I can use 11 times 3. So if I say, okay, 11 actually is a prime number as well as 3 is. So you're almost done. Now you just have to put your numbers in where you have the smallest prime factor first. So I would say 3 times 5 times 5 times 11. That would be my prime factorization of 825. Now maybe you looked at this number and you said, I know it ends in a 5, therefore it has to be divisible by a 5. Absolutely, okay, I agree. So we could say, hey, 5 times 165 is going to equal 825. Okay, 5 is a prime number. That's good, but 165 is not. We got to break that down more. Again, I see it ends in a 5. So I'm going to say, okay, well, if it ends in a 5, I can divide it by 5 again. Now I'm going to get 5 times 33. Okay, 5 is still a prime number. 33 is not, but I can break this down into 11 times 3. And you'll notice I got the exact same answer. 3 times 5 times 5 times 11. So when you're doing these types of problems with these prime factorizations trees, this would be okay for you to use a calculator. So let's say calculator, okay, all right. Again, so, and sometimes in math, I'll, we'll let you use calculators. Sometimes we won't because we're testing certain skills. When you're doing these prime factorization trees with big numbers, this is one of those times where it's okay to use a calculator. And then we also have greatest common factor. So again, we've kind of touched on this, but greatest common factor, you want to list out all the factors and then see which one is the greatest that they have in common. So I always start with one times 40 because one times 40 is going to give me 40. And I work from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to say, okay, well, two times 20 is also going to be 40. Three times, no, that doesn't work. Four times 10 works. Four times 10. Five times eight. Um, let's see here. Six, 12, 36, 42, no. Seven, no. Eight, no. Uh, or seven, no. Eight, yes. So now I'm back. So, hey, those are all the factors that I can get with 40. Now let's do 60. Again, I always like to start with one and 60. Okay, it's an even number. It ends in a zero, so I know 2 and 30 is going to work. 3, yep, I think 3 is going to work. 3 times 20, 4, let's see here. 40, 44, 48, 52, 56, 60. Oh, I think 4 works. 4 and 15, Five is going to work. Five times, that would be 12. Six times 10. Um, I don't think seven works. I don't think eight works. Nine, nope. And now I'm back. So now I got to go and look at what is common between these two. Okay, they have ones, twos, fours, fives, tens, and 20s. So I would say, hey, what's the largest or the greatest common factor of 40 and 60? In this case, it's going to be 20. Okay, so in, the, in this first example, or that what we just used 
numbers. Now we also have variables. So we're going to kind of break it up into two parts. We're going to look at the numbers and then we're going to look at the variables. So I'm going to first focus on numbers. Okay. So numbers first and then variables second. So I see I've got the number six. Okay. So I'm going to say, all right, this is one and six, two and three. So, and then I'm going to jump down and I'm going to look at my other numbers, which is four. So I say, okay, I've got one and four, two times two. So if just looking at my numbers, I say, hey, I've got, I know that my GCF between six and four is going to be two, but then I have to look at the variables next or variables second. So... Writing a to the third is like saying a times a times a. And b with no number is like saying it's b to the first. So I'm just going to put a b here, okay? That's all I have. Whereas down here, I've got a squared. I have a times a. And then again, I just have one b, so I'm going to have b. So I can see, hey, a to the third, I have two a's in common a times a or a squared so i have to take the smallest variable like the smallest exponent that i have in common because again if i had three in one and two in the other that wouldn't be common because there's more in one than there is in the other so if i look at what i've got highlighted here my gcf okay my gcf is going to be two I have a times a, so two, a squared, and then I have b. GCF is two, a squared, b. So that is our greatest common factor, two, a squared, b.